Kia ora tātou and welcome back to everyone. This time from Kiri Kiri, which I can't say is warm and sunny this afternoon. A little bit stormy, but we're here and we made it. It's been quite a week for us since the um, competition on Saturday, but we finally got all the results in today and we can share all the exciting news with you. So first of all, Julie has some thank yous that she'd like to make. Hi, a huge thank you to all our coaches and students for choosing to participate in our first ever virtual national finals. By taking this on board and running with it, we've been able to run a very successful event. So we appreciate you all and your efforts. Um, a special thank you to Glenis Martin and North Cross Intermediate for providing a venue for the on-site in Auckland for the day. And many thanks also to the coaches in Christchurch that tried to organise the same thing. Your efforts are appreciated. I'd also like to extend a very special thank you to you, Peter, for all the work you've done for us this year. We did exceptionally well at IC due to being able to run an online practice booklet. Peter stepped up to make sure we could run both QP and Nationals virtually when we were uncertain what the lockdown levels would be. Peter has had to do all of this by himself and at very short notice and running just in front of the tide. His willingness to respond to our needs has been exceptional. Thank you, Peter. It's been a pleasure to work with you and appreciate all of your efforts. Last but not least, a shout out to the International Office. Thank you for running a virtual event, IC event this year, the organisation of which gave us a template where we needed it for our own national finals. And many thanks for sharing your award ceremony PowerPoint with us um, this morning. So we're actually able to present this award ceremony to our coaches and students in a timely fashion. Thank you, April and team. And on my behalf, a huge thank you to the admin board for all the support that you've given us especially in the last few weeks when we've been able to use Zoom meetings. Julie and I really, really appreciate the time that you've given to us. Most of the members of the admin board have been really busy evaluating this week and all the different components of the program and have stepped up when we've needed them. And we think you're absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Uh, also, um, I don't know how to say this actually, but Thank you so much, Julie. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what we could do, we'd do without you in the programme. I'm sure you all appreciate how much Julie has worked, the last, especially the last two or three weeks. I don't think she's slept at all. She got up this morning and drove from Auckland to Kiri Kiri so that we could have all the results done for you. She must have had probably 10,000 emails and phone calls in the last two weeks. And she just has dealt with them all cool, calm and collectively, and we really, really, really appreciate what she does for us. The, um, you might be interested to know that oh, since Saturday afternoon, there have actually been 260 separate evaluations done on the various components of the competition. Now, if you work out that most of them are 30 minutes at least, some of them take an hour, that's a lot of hours that our wonderful team of evaluators have put in. Um, we've had people who have stepped up when we've needed second rounds or in one case even third rounds. We had somebody step up last night and finish off one lot of booklets that needed finishing. And these are all people who are either students in schools or they're working in other jobs, they're teachers, and they were prepared to give time to us this week for your sake. So more than a huge thanks to our team of evaluators. You're absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for so much for those kind words, Robin. They're really appreciated. I will say none of this would be possible without the fantastic team we've got behind us, um, including yourself, Robin, who I know you retired and puts masses of hours into the programme on an unpaid basis. So thank you to all that keep the programme running and well supported. Thank you, Julie. Uh, all of you students... You are absolutely awesome. Your efforts were amazing. You've given us some incredible challenges and kept us on our toes for the last few days because so much of your work was of such a high standard and the, um, the marks were so close that, as I said, in some cases we've had to go to a third round of evaluation to try and sort out the booklets. 
we'll let you know as we go through who, who ended up in, in three rounds. As you will know, uh, taking part in the Future Problem Solving New Zealand National Finals means that you are eligible to be the New Zealand representatives at the International Finals next year. The International Finals next year are planned as an on-site and virtual competition. On-site will be at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst and obviously the virtual will take place here in New Zealand. So you will still be representing New Zealand uh, at those finals one way or another. The people who are scenario writers, scenario performers, community problem solvers and global issues problem solvers are eligible to be our representatives and as we go through the results we'll let you know who those people are. So good luck. It's coming up any moment now that we will be reading those results for you. So get prepared. <laughs> So every year we ask our coaches to nominate a student who they think would be worthy of a student service award for future problem solving. And this year we're very pleased to be able to award two student service awards to two of our outstanding uh, students from Christchurch. And so the very first student, congratulations to Cameron Hudson from Kashmir High School. Cameron has been a very keen global issues future problem solver since year seven at Cobham Intermediate School. His commitment is such that he has never missed a practice in his time at school. He has been a crucial member of teams that have made it to national finals and under pressure in the online 2020 international finals, his team placed third in senior gyps. This was very well deserved and even more memorable in this very strange year for the global community. As Cameron has got more and more skillful himself, so has his commitment to future problem solving and the time he has spent helping others enjoy FPS. He has been a national evaluator for three years. For the last two years, he has also been an evaluator for the qualifying problem and national finals. Cameron is a natural communicator, leader and mentor. Whether he is helping other students at his school or evaluating the booklets of younger teams or individuals within the New Zealand programme, he always expects their best, is encouraging and positive and gives useful feedback. In this way, he has already helped a lot of students across the country to improve at FPS. His commitment to FPS is more than just performance though. He has just been accepted into the officer training programme with the New Zealand Army on a full scholarship after rigorous scenario simulation exercises where he, where he excelled. He credited the skill set he has developed with FPS and the time pressure management he has dealt with as part of the programme. He also gives back to the junior FPS programme at his school where he helps coach and is a mentor for the younger students fresh into the programme. He takes, makes time for them and answers their questions in a way that not only engages them, but directs them to a solution. He talks with these younger students in a reassuring, positive and empowering way. He is also head boy and FPS prefect at Kashmir High School, where he openly promotes FPS within school and integrates his problem sol solving skills with the senior leadership team, but also the senior school student council. Cameron is a an outstanding young man, and I'm delighted to be able to award Cameron the 2020 Student Service Award. And our second Student Service Award for the year also goes to a very worthy recipient, also from Christchurch, and congratulations to Ewen Wong. Ewen has been involved with FPS since year four at Fendleton Primary School and has remained a committed and highly successful GYPS team member, scenario writer, and then GYPS individual since then. She's represented Cobham Intermediate and Burnside High School, and therefore New Zealand, as a GYPS individual at IC, and placed sixth and fifth. Travelling to IC in groups with students from other schools, she then enthusiastically joined their PAP presentations in the true spirit of FPS. In 2019, Ewan had the privilege of being the New Zealand flag bearer. 
Ewan was introduced to future problem solving prior to attending high school, but continued along the trail in various capacities throughout her five years at Burnside High School. Towards the end of year nine, she and another student approached a teacher and asked if she'd be interested in supporting the FPS students at Burnside. So infectious was her enthusiasm, the teacher really couldn't turn her down. She wasn't disappointed. Ewan was a constant source of inspiration and knowledge for her coach in her own FPS journey. Ewan is a powerhouse in terms of intellect and energy, and when she finds something she sees real value in, in that it will make the world a better place, like FPS, she remains committed for the long haul and naturally does as much as she can. Ewan is passionate about the environment and about how people can be better educated about issues and then do more. So much so that in year 10 she founded an environmental trust and she is active in our city's youth empowerment scene, helping to organise events. There's no doubt that in the future she'll be a leader in some environmental related field and will make the world a better place. Ewan became a national evaluator in year 11 and now evaluates for second round of the qualifying problem and nationals. At Burnside High she has fostered FPS and has made sure that the program remains strong at the school. She has really helped new coaches there as they come to grips with it, helping to plan and run sessions and she has coached a Global Issues individual to national finals. The program has given her so much and she then gives this out to others in the other many facets of her life, including as Burnside High School's head girl. Ewan is irrepressible, committed and informed and is a wonderful FPS role model. At Future Problem Solving New Zealand, we appreciate Ewan's excellent evaluating, especially at the national finals. I'm delighted to be able to award Ewen the 2020 Student Service Award. And what wonderful young student they are. I'm always in awe when we get these nominations in. And Cameron and Ewen are definitely very worthy recipients of this year's award. So congratulations to both of you. Well done. So now we get on to our competitions. The first competition is the on-site scenario writing. The students who take part in this competition have already sent in their scenarios for the main competition. So during our national finals, they get the opportunity to write a 1500 word futuristic scenario in two hours based on the problem that the global issues problem solving students are dealing with. So congratulations to our winners. This was a really, really tough competition to judge because they were so close. So we have three places in each division and the first place in the division is the best on-site writer for that division. So in the junior on-site scenario writing, in third place, SWJ3 from Cobham Intermediate School, Katie Horton. In second place, SWJ5 from Medbury School, Ewan McVicar. And the junior best on-site writer, big congratulations to SWJ6 from North Cross Intermediate, Libby Schellig. Well done. In the middle division, in third place, SWM3 from Kashmir High School, Sophia Park Eddy. In second place, scenario writer M4 from Kashmir High School, Ruby Geddes. And the best on-site writer in the middle division, congratulations to SWM5, St Mary's College, Auckland, Isabel Lloyd. Well done. And in the senior division on-site scenario writing, in third place we have SWS7 from Kashmir High School, Louis Howell. In second place, 
SWS11 from Kashmir High School, Kavya Thomas, and the best on site writer in the senior division, SWS10 from Kashmir High School, Luke Ozich. Congratulations on an excellent scenario. So our second competition is the presentation of Action Plan, where students take the action plan that they have written during their booklet competition and have several hours to make props and costumes. And this year they recorded it and sent their recordings into us to be judged. And I can tell you that was a lot of work on behalf of the evaluators because there were some great presentations out there. So congratulations to these people. Okay, we're not going to give the names here because there would have been extras in the teams from the individual competitions and we didn't want to accidentally leave anybody's names off. So in the Y division, in third place, PAPY5, Elmwood Normal School. Second place, PAPY2, Diamond Harbour School. And the winner in the Y division is PAPY1, Selwyn House School. Congratulations to those teams. In the JB division, in third place, PAPJB7, St Andrews College. In second place, PAPJB3, Drury School. And in first place in the JB division, PAPJB4, Selwyn House School. Congratulations. In the junior division, third place, PAPJ12, North Cross Intermediate. Second place, PAPJ9, Mount Monganui Intermediate School. And in first place, also from Mount Monganui Intermediate School, PAPJ4. Congratulations to those teams as well. Middle Division. Third place, MPAP7, Kashmir High School. Second place, MPAP 11, St Margaret's College. And first place, MPAP 4, Burnside High School. Congratulations. And in the senior division, third place, SPAP 4, Westlake Girls High School. Second place, SPAP 6, Westlake Boys High School. And first in the senior division, SPAP 1 from St Mary's College. Congratulations to you all. So all of the competitions from now on are really important because these are the ones where students will be invited to represent us at the international finals in June next year. Uh, that will be a hybrid final, so there'll be a choice between uh, taking part virtually from New Zealand or attending uh, the University of Massachusetts. We anticipate that most people will be choosing the virtual finals. So uh, this year we had a wide division scenario. We don't always invite our wide uh, writers to the national finals. These are students at primary school in years four to six. This year we had a Y division scenario that was so outstanding that we thought that she deserved to be invited to the national finals. So congratulations to Emily Preble from Fendleton Primary School for your excellent Y division scenario. Well done, Emily. So our junior division scenario writers 
the, this competition was extremely close and it took a lot of evaluating and quite a number of evaluators to find the winner in this this division. And remember that the piece, people who place first and second are invited to represent us at IC. So junior scenario writers, we have in third place from Cobham Intermediate, Katie Horton. In second place, from North Cross Intermediate, Madeline Bennett. And this year's Junior Scenario Writing Champion from North Cross Intermediate is Tasman Smale. Congratulations to you three, those were excellent scenarios. And now we come to the middle division scenarios and again first and second place in this competition will be invited to represent New Zealand at next year's IC. In third place, Sophia Parkhedi from Kashmir High School. In second place, and invited to represent us at IC, Alex Bryant from Nelson College. And in first place, this year's Middle Division Scenario Writing Champion is Isabel Lloyd from St Mary's College. Congratulations to all of you. The Senior Division Scenario Writing Competition. In third place, Kavya Thomas from Kashmir High School. In second place, Lou Kozic from Kashmir High School. And this year's Senior Division Scenario Writing Champion in first place from Kashmir High School, Louis Howell. Congratulations to all of you. And the Senior Division Scenario Writing Competition also took some time to determine the winners. Congratulations again all. And for those of you who are wondering what Scenario Writing is, the Scenario Writing Competition is an opportunity for students to act like an author. Instead of just writing something very quickly and then moving on to something else, they have up to a year to craft their scenario just as an author would, to go back, to edit it, to redevelop it. And they choose one of the topics for the year that particularly interests them, research it, and then write a 1500 word futuristic scenario based on the topic that they have chosen. And I will say that the senior ones were outstanding this year, as Julie said, and I wish you could have been around to hear the discussion that went on to finally pick the three winners. You, you've done exceedingly well, you three. Our next competition is also starts with scenario. This is a relatively new competition for us, and it's called scenario performance. And it's very like scenario writing in that you take one of the topics for the year, you research the topic, and then rather than writing a story, you tell your story. And so that's then recorded and sent in to us. And we've been really excited to see this um, particular component taking off over the last few years. So we had two scenario performers this year, and Julie's going to read out the results. Our middle division champion in scenario performance this year is Fritha Rooney Allison from St Mary's College in Auckland. Our senior division scenario performance champion is Hannah Danielle from Kashmir High School. Congratulations to both of you. You're both invited to represent us at IC. I would also just like to add that when there is only one person in competing, it is not an automatic invite to IC. You have to meet the standard in order to be invited. Both of these girls did exceptionally well. Congratulations. At this stage, we should also be announcing our community problem solving winners. But at this stage, the community problem solving is still being evaluated because it's quite a complex process. And those will be announced at a later date and we'll put them up on the website and on the Facebook page 
and may even have some videos to share as well. Our final component is global issues problem solving. And I'd just like to say that, as you all know, there was a problem on Saturday with the technical issues that we were unable to forecast. But I just want to say a huge thank you to Peter and Julie for the way that they dealt with that situation. And also to all the coaches and students. The one thing that I was really excited about was the fact that nobody got angry, nobody yelled at us, and that everybody just managed to calmly, coolly, and collectively get themselves sorted out and get on with it. It was really interesting because to me that reflects what future problem solving is all about. And one of the coaches actually said to us, that's why the kids didn't have a problem, because the skills that they've learned in this program are what helped them to manage the situation. And I was very proud of Future Problem Solving to hear them say that. So thank you for that. That was what Future Problem Solving is all about. So in Global Issues Problem Solving, we have the team competition and the individual competition. And in the individual competition, I think it's quite a big challenge that these students work by themselves in the two-hour time frame to write an entire booklet by themselves. I don't think I could do it. And again, the standards have been very high this year right across all the competitions, and they certainly were in the individual competition. Some of these competitions actually went to three rounds before we were able to select the winners. So the junior individuals this year, a reminder that the first and second place junior individual will be invited to represent New Zealand at the international finals. In third place, we have JI64 from Heaton Normal Intermediate School, Oliver Murchison. In second place, we have JI61 from St Andrews College, James Anthony. And this year's individual junior champion is from JI62 from St Andrews College, Hannah Withers. Congratulations. In the middle division, in third place, MI68 from Burnside High School, Maya Rodnianski. In second place and invited to IC, MI66, Hugh Ryan from Rickerton High School. And in first place, this year's middle individual champion from Westlake Boys High School, Daniel Zeng, also invited to IC. Congratulations to you all. And our senior individuals, remember first and second, invited to represent us at IC. And the one thing I meant to mention is the third place is really important because if one of the first or second place turns down the invitation, the third place then gets an automatic invitation to IC. So our senior individuals in third place, SI75 from Westlake Girls High School, Abby Clements. In second place, SI71 from Kristen School, Vanessa Jiong. And this year's senior individual GYPS champion in first place. SI76 from Kristen School, Quinley Zhang. And I'd really like to congratulate Quinley, that is really well deserved. Quinley is an evaluator in the program and he's one of the most outstanding young evaluators that I have ever seen. And it just shows you that when you learn to evaluate, you learn a lot extra about how to actually do FPS. So congratulations to all three of you, that's a fine effort. And now we come to the final part of the competition, the Global Issues Problem Solving Team Competition. And this year, this competition was held in various places around the country. And it was really interesting to see how the teams managed 
to cope in a different environment from what they may be used to. The topic for this year was living in poverty and it was a very interesting future scene that I have to say that the students coped with extremely well. We had some very good booklets. So in this uh, competition we do have a wide division. The wide division are our primary school students and we give them an opportunity to come to the national finals. Because they do a slightly different a problem solving process to the rest of the teams we we can't invite them to the international finals but we honor them as being our Y division champions for the year and I have to tell you that the Y division booklets were quite possibly the hardest ones to mark because they actually ended up being marked by four evaluators and even after that we could not split a second and third booklet so for the first time ever in the history of Future Problem Solving New Zealand, we have a second equal in the Y Division booklets. So congratulations to, to those people who produced such amazing booklets that we just could not figure out which, which one was better than the other one because they weren't. So in second equal place in the Y Division, we have Y11 from Selwyn House School. In second place in the Y Division, we have Y15 from Fendleton Primary School. And our Y Division champions this year were agreed to by all of the evaluators. They picked this as the first place booklet. And so huge congratulations to Y10 Elmwood Normal School. Congratulations to all of you. you, did a wonderful job this year, Y Division. We now come to the divisions where the top two teams in each um, division will get invited to IC to represent New Zealand. So in third place in the JB Division, JB27, North Cross Intermediate. In second place, JB29 and invited to IC, St Andrews College. And this year's JB champion, in first place, JB22 from Selwyn House School, also invited to represent us at IC. Congratulations to you all. And now in our junior division, in third place, and remember third place is important, should any of the other teams pull out, you get invited next. So in third place, J33, Mount Monganui Intermediate School. In second place, and invited to the international finals, J30 from North Cross Intermediate School. And this year's Junior Global Issues Problem Solving Champions, first place, J32 from North Cross Intermediate School. Congratulations to all of you. And now we come to the middle division. In third place, M50, St Margaret's College. In second place, and invited to IC, M41, also from St Margaret's College. And this year's Middle Division Champions in first place and invited to IC, M46 from Kristen School. Congratulations to all of you. And for our last group of teams, we have our Senior Global Issues Problem Solvers. In third place, congratulations to Team S55, Westlake Boys High School. Second place seniors and invited to the international finals, we have S50, Westlake Girls High School. And congratulations to our senior champions for the year it was a tough competition and you made it 
In first place, S51 St Mary's College. And congratulations to the senior teams, it was a fine effort. And now we're congratulating ourselves because it's 11.30 at night and we've actually managed to get this finished so that we can get it to you before you finish school on Friday afternoon. So thanks to the team for all their hard work. Well, congratulations to all of you. Those results were absolutely awesome. You put in a magnificent effort, especially in this interesting year of 2020. And we are so pleased that you could be here with us. So well done, all of you. Those of you who have made it to be our representatives at IC next year, our coaches will be holding a Zoom meeting later in the week to give you some more details about this. So keep watching those emails. You'll be getting some more from FPS. Mm. Well done, everyone. We're so proud of you.